Hey there, fellow farmers. If you've ever spent time near a chicken coop, you've surely become familiar with a symphony of sounds. The energetic crow of the rooster at dawn, the soft clucking of the hens as they forage, or the insistent peeping of the chicks. Maybe you've even observed their peculiar body movements, postures, or how they interact. Have you ever wondered what all these sounds and gestures really mean? Is there a way for us, as people or farmers, to communicate with them, or at least understand their language? Understanding their vocal and body language communication is fundamental to ensuring their well-being and optimizing your work as a farmer. Get ready to unveil the secrets of avian language. Let's start with the most familiar and common sound for all of us, the rooster's crow. The rooster's crow, a distinctive acoustic phenomenon, is a multifunctional vocalization that plays crucial roles in the social and reproductive ecology of poultry. Far from being a simple announcement of sunrise, this vocal behavior is a complex manifestation of signals that transmit vital information within the flock and to the environment. From an ethological perspective, the rooster's crow can be interpreted as a signal of territorial display and dominance. Roosters establish and maintain social hierarchies within a group, and crowing is a primary means to communicate their status and presence to other males, deterring potential intruders and reinforcing their position as the flock's leader. The frequency and intensity of the crow can correlate with the individual's vitality and fitness. The specific reasons behind the crow. The dawn crow. The dawn crow is primarily driven by the rooster's internal biological clock, or circadian rhythm. These animals are genetically programmed to start the day's activity just before daybreak. Daybreak is that early morning moment when light starts to appear on the horizon, just before the sun becomes visible. They use their crow to mark the beginning of the day and reaffirm their position as the dominant rooster at that crucial time. It's a declaration of, I'm here, I'm the leader, and this is my territory, at the start of each new solar cycle. The midday and other times crow. Although less prominent than the morning crow, crowing repeats throughout the day and night for various reasons. It serves as a constant reinforcement of their territory and status. It's like a vocal patrol the rooster performs to ensure his message of dominance remains clear to other potential contenders or predators. It can also be an expression of general well-being in a healthy, content rooster in his environment. Crowing in response to other roosters, live or recorded. When a rooster hears another crow, whether from a neighboring rooster or a recording on your phone, he interprets it as a direct intrusion or a challenge to his authority and territory. His instinctive response is to crow back in a vocal competition to reaffirm his presence and dominance, clearly establishing that this is my turf. For the rooster, the origin of the sound is secondary. What matters is the signal from another male that needs to be answered. In addition to its territorial function, crowing has a reproductive component. It has been observed that the rooster's vocalization can stimulate ovulation in hens, suggesting a role in synchronizing the group's reproduction. This vocal act can also be part of courtship, attracting the attention of females and signaling his readiness to mate. Another fundamental aspect is its role as an alarm or warning signal. Although the morning crow is the most recognized, roosters can emit similar vocalizations in response to perceived threats or unexpected external stimuli like loud vehicle noises, dog barking, or the presence of unfamiliar people on the farm. In this context, crowing serves to alert the flock to imminent danger, facilitating a coordinated response of flight or seeking shelter. Consequently, the rooster's crow can also be a call for attention from caretakers, especially in domestic or farm environments. Roosters may vocalize to indicate the need for food, water, or to signal a desire to access a different area, demonstrating a form of interspecies communication with people. I want to take a moment to tell you that, in response to your requests, we've created a new space just for you called Farm Animals. It's a channel where we'll explore everything about the other varieties of animals that populate our fields and farms. Find the link in this video's description, check it out, and subscribe. You're sure to love it. Let's continue. Our birds' communication goes far beyond the rooster's crow, with hens and their chicks using an impressive variety of vocalizations, each with a specific purpose, for example, clucking. Clucking is a sound of satisfaction and well-being. Short, soft, low-frequency notes usually indicate a state of calm, contentment, and social cohesion within the group. You'll hear it as they calmly forage or relax, cackling after laying an egg. This sound is usually loud and distinctive, which the hen emits immediately after laying an egg. It acts as an announcement of her achievement and can be answered by other hens, creating a kind of congratulatory conversation or confirmation of the event. We can also find purring or grunting sounds from the broody hen. 
A hen incubating eggs or caring for chicks emits a low, soft sound, almost a purr. This vocalization is crucial for communication with the embryos inside the egg, facilitating synchronized hatching, and for guiding and calming the chicks once hatched, keeping them close and safe. For this reason, we find sounds that simulate the dialogue between the broody hen and her eggs or chicks. This purr intensifies as hatching approaches. The hen emits small clucks and chirps that the chicks respond to from inside the egg, creating an auditory bond prior to birth. Once hatched, the hen continues to use these soft vocalizations to teach them to forage, find water, and recognize danger, gently nudging them under her feathers for protection. Consequently, chicks also tend to respond with sounds, but in this case, chicks have two ranges of peeps, which are the following. Distress peep. A sharp, repetitive, high-frequency peep indicates cold, fear, hunger, or that the chick is separated from its mother or the group. It's a cry for help, and the contentment peep. A softer, more rhythmic peep suggests that the chick is comfortable, warm, and fed. Hens have the ability to emit different types of alarms depending on the nature of the predator. For example, when there's an aerial predator, they emit a short, sharp, descending sound, warning about a predator in the air, be it a hawk or an eagle. The group's response is to duck down, seek shelter, or remain motionless. Unlike a series of repetitive, deeper, and explosive cackles will be warning about a terrestrial predator, like a fox, dog, or even a person. The response is to run and seek cover. When a hen or a rooster finds a valuable food source, they emit a repetitive and distinctive sound to invite other members of the flock to share it. In the rooster's case, this call can also be a component of courtship, although hens can learn to discern if the offer is genuine or just an attempt to mate. A drastic change in vocalizations can be a strong indicator of problems. Excessive and constant peeping in chicks, or repetitive and sharp squawks in adult hens without a visible threat, usually signal stress, pain, or prolonged fear. The absence of usual vocalizations, vocal apathy, can also be a sign of serious illness or depression. Communication in poultry isn't just auditory. Their body language is equally rich and essential for social interaction. Social hierarchy, or pecking order, is constantly established and maintained through nonverbal communication. A dominant rooster or a top hen will display with their head held high, chest prominent, and neck and rump feathers bristling, performing display wing flaps and subtle pushes. Subordinate birds, on the other hand, will adopt lower postures, avoid direct eye contact, and show submission to avoid conflict. This constant communication allows the flock to function with minimal aggression. A dominant rooster or a hen establishing their hierarchy will present with their head held high, chest forward, feathers bristling, especially on the neck and rump, and may perform quick wing flaps followed by an imposing posture. This communicates strength and authority to other flock members or intruders. A subordinate bird may show a lowered head, avoid direct eye contact, or crouch and flatten its feathers. A hen that crouches in front of a rooster indicates receptiveness to mating. When you observe a rooster or a hen with their feathers fluffed up, it could mean the following. Cold. They'll try to trap air between their feathers to insulate themselves. Illness or discomfort. Often accompanied by lethargy and lack of appetite. Comfort and relaxation. When they're dust bathing or sunbathing. Shaking head or body. This can be to shake off dust, readjust feathers, or a sign of irritation or stress. Tail movements. The tail can be raised as a sign of alertness or dominance, or lowered as a sign of fear or illness. Walking and foraging. Calm, exploratory movement indicates security and well-being. Erratic running or huddling can indicate fear or confusion. Pecking and scratching on the ground or floor. While these are normal feeding behaviors, they can also be used in hierarchical disputes or to explore a new environment. It's crucial to understand that, while general communication patterns exist, each bird is an individual. Some hens may be more vocal, others more reserved. Some roosters more dominant, others more protective. Observing and learning the nuances in the vocalizations and behaviors of each of your birds will allow you to better understand their needs and their role within the group. Dust bathing is not just a hygiene behavior, it's a social and relaxing activity. Seeing several hens rolling together in the dust, emitting soft clucks and coos, indicates a state of group well-being and non-verbal communication of shared comfort and security. A well-designed coop with enough space per bird, adequate perches, nesting areas, and ample foraging zones significantly reduces stress and aggression. In an optimal environment, you'll hear more vocalizations of contentment and fewer squawks of stress or fighting. Lack of space, conversely, exacerbates conflicts and generates vocalizations of distress. 
The general noise level and type of vocalizations in the Kuop can function as an environmental thermometer. An unusual silence can indicate the presence of a predator or an abnormality. On the other hand, excessive peeping in chicks could signal they are cold, while persistent and loud cackling in hens could indicate overheating or uncomfortable drafts. It's fascinating to observe how hens' alerts aren't just for their own species. Other farm animals, like ducks or turkeys, often react to hens' alarm calls. Similarly, your birds can learn to interpret signals from other animals, such as a guardian dog's bark or a nearby cat's meow, adjusting their behavior accordingly. The arrival of new birds into an established flock is a significant communicative challenge. Existing birds will try to reaffirm their hierarchy through vocal and physical aggression, while new birds will seek signs of acceptance or submission. A gradual and monitored introduction is crucial to minimize stress, fights, and conflict vocalizations, allowing the flock to establish a new hierarchy more peacefully. While we can't have a conversation with chickens in the human sense, it's absolutely possible to establish communication patterns that facilitate interaction and improve their well-being. The key is consistency. You can use a specific call, for example, hear, hear, or a particular whistle, when offering them food. Over time, your birds will associate that sound with the reward and approach. This is useful for gathering them or guiding them to the coop. Chickens are sensitive to loud noises and sudden movements. Speaking to them with a soft, calm tone of voice while you're near them helps them perceive you as a source of security, not a threat. Some experienced farmers might try to imitate a hen's contented cluck to calm a stressed group, or to indicate there's no danger. However, this requires a lot of observation and practice to understand the appropriate context for each sound. Effective communication with your birds isn't just about what you say to them, but also about how you read their signals. Observe their postures, sounds, and reactions to your presence. You'll learn to recognize if they're relaxed, scared, sick, or looking for something. Using treats or preferred food when interacting with them reinforces positive associations with your presence and the sounds you use to call them. Your own attitude and state of mind are crucial. Birds are very sensitive to human emotions. A calm, patient, and confident caretaker conveys trust, helping to calm the flock and reduce stress. Conversely, impatience or sudden movements can generate fear and anxiety in your birds, resulting in alarm vocalizations or evasion. We hope this deep dive into avian communication has opened your eyes to the complexity and richness of your bird's world. Understanding the vocal and body language of roosters, hens, and chicks isn't just a curiosity. It's a powerful tool that will allow you to be a more attentive, proactive, and ultimately, more successful farmer. By recognizing alarm signals, contentment calls, or requests for attention, you'll be able to anticipate their needs and respond effectively, strengthening your bond with your flock and ensuring their well-being. A crucial call to action for you, farmer. Fellow farmer, if this journey into the fascinating world of poultry communication has resonated with you, I have exciting news. We understand that your passion for farm life goes beyond just one type of animal. That's why, in response to countless requests from our beloved community, we've created a brand new channel dedicated to the diversity of the farm animal kingdom. This is the birth of farm animals, your new digital home, where we'll explore together the vast universe of creatures that inhabit our fields and coops. From noisy pigs and calm cows to agile goats and majestic horses, this channel will be a living encyclopedia on their care, behavior, communication, and everything else you need to know to be an exceptional farmer no matter the species. Don't fall behind on this new adventure. Knowledge expands your horizons and improves your practice. That's why we invite you to take the next step on your farming journey. Visit the link you'll find in the description of this video. Dive into the content we've prepared with such care and subscribe to Farm Animals. We're sure you'll love this new space, and it will become an inexhaustible source of inspiration and learning. If you found this video as fascinating and useful as we hope, we invite you to join our community of passionate farmers. Give this video a like, share it with other enthusiasts, and of course, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future content that will elevate your knowledge and skills in chicken farming. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to be the first to know about every new upload. To your success, fellow farmer, until next time.